Tucker and ready to continue with this pay-per-view boxing card. If you were with us before we lost power, you saw Jorge Linares gain a unanimous decision victory over Rocky Juarez. And now we're ready for the second fight on the card, which takes place in the 140-pound weight class and features the appearance of Joel Casamayor, who, as a, a Cuban defector, after having won a gold medal at the Olympics, uh, has been in this country for 14 years and has had some sensational bouts uh, in previous tours of duty in the junior lightweight and lightweight divisions against Diego Corrales, against Jose Luis Castillo and various other top fighters. A couple of years ago, he lost the legitimate lightweight championship of the world to Juan Manuel Marquez. And most boxing experts felt at that time that Casamayor, having been knocked out for the first time in his career by Marquez, was probably not to be seen in the big fight environment again. But he's stubborn, he's not willing to give it up, he thinks he's as good as ever, and he's here to fight Robert Guerrero for prominence at 140 pounds, Emmanuel. Well, you're as good as you think you are to some degree, and he has tremendous confidence in himself, and I think it's gonna be a very interesting test. I think Guerrero is one of the best fighters in the world, young, bigger, I think, faster, but the fact that I was told that Casimir has gotten in great shape for this, realizing that if he loses this fight, it will probably remove him from the elite level of boxing. So he's taking it very serious, and any time a person is serious about his preparation, you have to look at him as a serious challenge. Now here's the factoid of the night. Having been a professional ever since uh, defecting to the United States after the Atlanta Olympics in 1996, Casimir, as a professional, himself a southpaw, has never before faced a southpaw. That's uh, fairly bizarre. But I'm quite sure in that 300 or 400 year career that he had as an amateur in Cuba, he's fought quite a few southpaws, but he did say it was a different feeling sparing with a southpaw in preparation for this fight. Now his opponent tonight has also appeared in lower weight classes. Robert Guerrero won titles at 126 pound and 130 pounds. He's more well known in the last couple of years for the ordeal of trying to sustain his professional boxing career while his wife, uh, Casey, has been battling cancer. And it's a brave fight. She got a bone marrow transplant earlier this year. Guerrero canceled the possibility. Well, he's a tall guy, he's almost five feet nine. And you know, when you look at these weight divisions, we call them, some of them only five pounds. I, I think there's a 115 pound division, there's 118, there's 122, 126, 130, 135, you know, 140. So it's not a big thing, especially for a tall guy like him. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for Guerrero against Casamayor. And as we continue to put things together here in coming back from the power outage, we get our graphics features back. Guerrero with a 12 year age advantage over Casamayor, who seems not to know that he's 39. A two inch height advantage for Guerrero. Arm length even measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in well under the 140 pound limit. Casamayor rehydrated 14 pounds overnight. Guerrero putting on only seven and a half or six and a half pounds up to 145. Now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, the action now continues from Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas. And it's all brought to you by Golden Boy Promotions with Marquez Promotions. And sponsored by Tecate Cerveza con Carácter. AT&T Viva Mexico plan. Make your calls with your wireless phone to Mexico or from Mexico. As if they were local calls. For this contest, the three judges assigned to ringside. Lisa Jampa, Dick Halk, and Robert Hoyle, and inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Jay Nady. And now, in the hottest division in all of boxing, 10 rounds of boxing in the junior welterweight division. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing red with black, officially weighing 138 one half pounds. Professional record, 26 victories, including 18 knockouts, with one defeat and one draw. From Gilroy, California, former three-time world champion, Robert the Ghost Guerrero. And fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white with gold, official weight, 138 pounds. Professional record, 
37 victories, including 22 knockouts, with four defeats and one bout even. De Guantanamo, Cuba, former four-time world champion, Joel El Cepillo Casamayo. Questions? Ten rounds. Obey commands. Want to sweat that? Good luck. Let's go to work. Whereas Casamayor said that he has never fought a southpaw as a professional fighter. Guillermo, even with his short career, has fought seven southpaws, in addition to having so many as an amateur that he fought. So he's, he's very, very experienced and comfortable with a southpaw, meaning Guerrero. And if you look at them in the ring, I think it's an unmistakable impression that even though Casamayor weighs more Stop. tonight, Thank you. basically Guerrero is the larger man. Broader shoulders, bigger legs. <laughs> it's almost hard to imagine they weigh the same thing. And you know, those guys say they're very familiar with each other when they both trained uh, with Joe Goosen back in California years back and spent a lot of hours together. But Casamayor was like the mentor to Robert, who was teaching him and showing him things, but they never spared. So it's a kind of strange feeling when you see those guys facing each other, you know, face to face after being so close and intimate with each other years back. Great point. There's a lot of mutual respect between the two. Uh, and, and Guerrero was quite free in saying, yeah, Casamayor taught me a lot. How could you not learn from somebody with all that experience? And especially being that, that they both were southpaws. I know his hand pushed it. Joe Goosen surely did not allow them to spar against each other because both had star profiles. And eventually figured this could lead to where it's led right now. It would end up with them fighting each other. So here it is. They've known each other for many years, and they finally meet at 140 pounds weight class in which Casamayor might have thought a few years ago he would never appear. A weight class which a few years ago was 14 pounds north of where Guerrero was doing his work. But as you say, weight classes matter less now. Yeah, the because they're so close. It used to be like 135, the next was 147. And 147, the next stop used to be 160. But now in between there is at least one way division, sometimes two in between those divisions. Okay, if if both factors damage the sport, and we'll watch Guerrero and Casamayor tactically feeling their way through the first round as you comment on this, which does greater damage to the sport? Four recognized governing bodies will each offer title belts, and some of them offer multiple title belts in every division, or 16 different weight classes as opposed to the original eight. Which is worse? Well, I, I don't know. It's both or just too many champions, like I say, rather than organizations or just weight divisions. It's just too many champions now. And, and, and sometimes in a 40-pound range, you might have close to around about five different weight divisions. Exactly. As we said, a tactical first round. To the degree that anything has happened, Guerrero landed a couple of jabs, which seem to make the point that he's the bigger guy. The Casamayor has used the ring, used the space, and gotten a good look at Guerrero in round number one. Listen to me well. You've got to keep your hands up. Jab some more. And you've got to walk. Walk. Don't stand still in front of him. Move. You always got to jab. You're bringing your right hand down, and he's catching you. He caught you here. He caught you with one. Bring your right hand up. Bring your right hand up and keep moving. Keep turning. Go. Into your power, mijo. When he comes in, mira. Short time. Bam. Bam, 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 bam. All right? Hey, stick him with that jab on your toes. Boom. Boom! Once you hit him, you're gonna set it up. All right? All right? He first when he gets stationary. You know what you're doing? He's not moving right? first. Bam, bam! 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 Back to the jab again. All right? Okay. Is that right? Right, coach. Be smart. Be smart. Hands up. In the preceding preliminary bout, I mentioned that in the early rounds, Jorge Linares was landing more than 20 punches per round. 
by contrast, in round number one here, Guerrero was five of 44, and Casamayor was two of 30. Seven landed punches in the entire first round by the two fighters combined. And Guerrero is going to have to step up the pace on this fight. He's going to push Casimir. Casimir, timing and reflexes is a little bit off. The age is showing. It's not that well coordinated. But Guerrero is going to have to step to him and make a faster pace fight in order to be effective. Otherwise, this could be a very boring fight. Casamayor might have avoided a knockdown yeah. by doing that. <laughs> he appeared to have been damaged by that left hand. If, if Guerrero starts going to him with faster punches, I don't think that his coordination and timing will be able to hold off Guerrero. Because he's not, he, he's, he's, he doesn't have the ability to avoid punches now. Casamayor, hey, now promoted by Golden One Boy, point. is One penalized point. a point One by Nady for holding. No! For clutching. The yeah. third time. Bucks. You heard Jay Nady saying that that was the third time, so he took the point away from Casamayor. And I think the point that Nady's trying to make to Casamayor is, hey, it's a fight. Sooner or later, you have to engage here. Casamayor took this fight on short money, thinking that it will set up future opportunity for him. Most of what he'll make here, he already owes to the IRS, so he has to hope that he wins. And I should say reportedly, because obviously I don't deal with the IRS for him, but reportedly he owes this money mostly to the IRS. I mean, his portion of the press goes. Correct. They're pressured as managers and trainers and other people involved. Correct. And conditioned guys. So. Regardless of what, it's not a good situation. Looking at Guerrero. You wonder how the heck he ever made 126. Yes, because he looks natural and he's still a slender guy. If he would go to and go and start throwing punches faster, try to force an exchange, he would knock out Casimir because Casimir does not have the speed out of coordination or reflexes to have a fast output. Plus, he's not that big a puncher. That's what he yeah, right there. That's what he there needs to keep doing it. He staggered in yeah. with that left hand. He, Casimir he, was holding on. Stop, he's stop. got absolutely nothing here, Emmanuel. Fox. He's he's going he's going to be clutching all night because that's all that he can do. Yeah. Two. Fortunately, Three. this is likely to turn into Four. a disqualification. Five. Six. Jay Seven. Nady's trying to Punch, avoid okay. that by ruling it a knockdown and, and giving the count. But if Guerrero starts throwing punches, especially shorter punches, which makes it much more difficult for him to clutch him, it, it would be a knockout at any time that he decides to throw the punches. Yeah, Guerrero is showing Casamayor, perhaps because of their past yeah, relationship, too much respect. more respect than Casamayor deserves on this particular night. Bring your hand up. Bring your hand up. Bring the right hand up. Where's the bucket? That one. Turn him. Turn him. You got to bring your hand up. Bring your left up. And let the left go. Let your left go. Understand? Bring your hand up. Here's the first left hand that hurt which Casamayor and prompted some of the holding early in the round. And I actually thought it was, should have been a knockdown. He bounced off the ropes, came back and grabbed Guerrero by the legs, and was ruled to have been holding. Then later on, this happened, and rather than to penalize Casamayor again for holding, referee Jay Nady ruled that a knockdown and gave the count. Punches in the second round, Guerrero 14 out of 46. Casamayor, four out of 20. Harold, how do you have it through okay, the first two? Jim, two to nothing, 20 to 16, Roberto Guerrero. Jim, that, that second round was something else. You know, I scored a 10 rounds, 10 points to seven in favor of Guerrero, and let me explain. Casamayor loses one point when Nady took the point for tackling, and another point when he, when he got knocked down legitimately. But you know, you get hit on a jaw, your natural tendency is to hold, and that's all there is to it. Joe Casamillo tried to do it, and Jay Nader got fed up with him and took a point. I don't know how much longer this is gonna go, but 10, 10, uh, two to nothing, 20 to 16, Roberto Guerrero. You know, the real truth of the matter is, Joel Casamayor lost the lightweight <laughs> championship and lost a lot of the respect he had garnered on the evening of November 10, 2007 in Madison Square Garden, 
when he fought Jose Santa Cruz. But as the result of some unbelievably dreadful scoring, Santa Cruz didn't get credit for victory in the fight. Then Casamayor was lucky enough after that to win a tumultuous bout against Michael Katsidis, uh, in which Katsidis basically threw his head into a Casamayor left hand and got knocked out. So he's had a little bit of good fortune that has sustained him in the sport in the last couple of years. But looking at his reflexes right now, particularly when Guerrero throws a straight left, he just pulls back. He has no really, no really defense. He's hoping that he's out of range. And uh, it's just a matter of time. I don't think he's going to be much longer fighting these quality of fighters anymore. But this is a situation where his reflexes and timing is really showing. And he's only going as last as long as Guerrero lays back and permits him to last. I have seen you lay into both Vladimir Klitschko and Lennox Lewis when you felt like they had opponents outmatched and were not serious enough about getting rid of them. I think if you were training Robert Guerrero, you'd be giving him one of those speeches. Yeah, every time he throws a left hand, the guy just basically tries to pull back and maybe fall down, but he has no ability to roll out of slip. But, you know, it's, it, you see it every time that he tries to go forward, Casamara does try to run further and create more space. So it's, it's not just that simple. And Casamayor is so tricky, so crafty, been around so long, and doesn't much care about the rules, cares more about winning. And Guerrero knows all that. So that's probably where the respect comes from. That round, Guerrero thoroughly outboxes Casamayor, but does not deliver any of the kind of physical damage that was the case in round two. Keep popping. Casey Guerrero waving at the camera. He, or she and Robert, I should say, have been together since junior high, basically. Parents of a five-year-old daughter and a three-year-old son, and she's making it back from cancer winning the fight, just as her husband is winning the fight in the ring. No, no, this round, you gotta throw a little bit more counters. All right? You gotta throw more counters. You gotta throw a little bit more counters when he's in the, in the corner, all right? Bam, 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 but short, hands up. All right? Watch out, you want some water? Okay, you know what you're doing. Give him a little bit. Mantén tu ya, sube la guardia, camina hacia tu mano izquierda. Te va a dar todo el pecho del tiempo. Ritmo de pelea. Emmanuel, you like garlic? Yes. Guerrero comes from the garlic <laughs> capital of the world. I don't eat too much of it, though. Gilroy, California. Yeah. <laughs> As Larry Merchant loves to point out, they have garlic ice cream in Gilroy. <laughs> Everything you can imagine. Ruben Guerrero is given the right instructions to Robert, which is to pick, put pressure, but then throw short of combinations. And uh, he basically he's jabbing, jabbing, and he throws a left cross. I would like to see him throw a right hook sometimes to, to throw his man off back a little, off track a little bit, jab, and then throw a right hook, and then throw the left. But he needs to keep the pressure on and shorten his punches up. I'm wondering if he's already been too kind to Guerrero, I mean, excuse me, yes. to Casamayor, and allowed him to stay in the fight when perhaps he could have gotten rid of him yeah. very now, early. Now he's shortening the distance right there. Casamayor cannot... His reflex is gone, but he can pull back if he feels something is coming. If he gets too close to him, he won't have time to, to judge the punches. sitting back fighting his fight. He's fighting a very uninspired, lackadaisical, technical fight instead of fighting with a little bit more intensity and pressure. And uh, when you do that, you're fighting Casamayor's fight.
That left hand was too long and looping to do real damage, but it did land cleanly. In order to make in order to make more damage with shorter punches, Emmanuel, he has to get close. Yes, he needs to move. He's fighting from too long a distance. He can move in close against through short, snappy punches. But uh, even though he's a taller guy, he still has much better snappier punches than Casimir. I mean, he's fighting him too far away. He's fighting the style and the rhythm and the distance that Casimir is very comfortable at fighting it. And as long as that's the case, Casamayor is still in the ring, and he seems to be getting stronger and more balanced as the rounds go by. Yep. And may have won that round. That said, you're catching a rhythm. Good. All right, guys, you listen. Listen to me well. You gotta hide your hand when you throw the hook to the body. Put the left up top. So the bottom and then finish off with the left. All right? We're doing good. Did good that round. One, two, and you go in. Get your rhythm. Lively. When you get your rhythm, bend your waist, move your legs. He's got no worries. The only thing he's got is that left. He hasn't hurt you with anything else. When he catch you with your hand down, that's when he hurts you. Bring your hands up. Protect your head. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep boxing. Keep moving. Here we see Casimir Lynn, which has probably been the best and the cleanest punch of the entire fight. A beautiful left hand shot right on the chin. Perfect counter punch over Guerrero's right hand. Zombie box numbers in that round. Guerrero, 9 out of 64. Casamayor, 7 out of 34. In other words, Joel's not throwing much, but he landed at a higher rate than Guerrero in that round. Guerrero. Casamayor left himself open for that one. But it doesn't prompt any particularly no. violent follow up. Yeah. Casamayor is not a real sharp combination type punch. He throws single one or two punches where he gets his points maybe from his amateur style of agent. And Guerrero has the ability to put sharp, crisp combinations together, but he's not doing it. And he's fighting pretty much at the same rhythm that Casamayor wanted, which is at one punch or two at a time. And therefore, it's going to be a competitive fight. Guerrero needs a signature victory, something on which fans can hang their hat. A stirring knockout here would, would probably help to do the trick. And it's right there in front of him tonight. It's not like he's in with an impossible test. He could have a great knockout tonight. But I've always wondered if maybe he lacks a certain killer instinct. Well, he's the not. Kind of assertion yeah. that you need. And, you know, Casimiro's keeping him at a distance where he has to throw long punches, and he basically is only throwing one or two punches. He's very seldom throwing three or four shots. And That's okay. That's okay. Guerrero's the slightly taller guy, and sometimes the taller fighter doesn't like to invest too much in body shots for fear of getting countered. But if ever there were a night to hammer a guy to the rib cage and try to really make him feel his age, this would be it. It would be, but he's got to put punches together. He's never throwing over two punches hardly. And, and you know, and, and Guerrero, I mean, uh, Casamiro's fighting a very, very smart fight. He's keeping that distance that he likes. He's comfortable that he's, he moves a little bit to the left, and he'll move off to the right a little bit, and he'll change directions again, and, and it's a nice little easy pattern for him, and Guerrero's going right along with it and fighting at the same rhythm. 
But in this round, Casamayor hasn't really been able to land no, anything. No, no, no. He's moving good, but he hasn't been able to land anything. So it's hard to imagine how he can win the fight. What he, he can stay in it, perhaps. But the, the point you made, Guerrero needs a very impressive victory tonight. Referee Vic Draculich will handle the main event between Juan Manuel Marquez and Juan Diaz. Here were his instructions to Marquez in the dressing room. The things that I'll watch very close for are the use of the forehead, the shoulders, the elbows, forearms, rabbit punches, kidney punches, and the low blows. No uses la cabeza, los hombros, los codos, esta parte de la mano y los low blows. Eso no no se puede usar. Obey my commands in there. Protect yourselves at all times. Sigue las instrucciones de él y protégete todo el tiempo. Preguntas? Buena okay. suerte. Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay, my man. Interesting. You don't always see the head of a governing body doing double duty as an interpreter for referees' instructions in the dressing room. Yeah. That gentleman was Paco Villarreal, who is, I believe, executive director is the right title uh, of the uh, of the governing body which administers the title which is being contested in the main event, or one of the titles. Which is yes, the WBO. You can do that. I stay away from that kind of alphabet <laughs> stuff. <laughs> They're all the same to me. Harold, how do you have it scored? Okay, Jim, 50 to 43, five rounds to nothing, Roberto Guerrero. Jim, now I'm gonna tell you why you're seeing what you're seeing. All right. Roberto Guerrero will not move in and try and take this guy out as long as there's that constant fear that Yoel Casamayor will butt you and split you wide open. And that's exactly what he's good at. He uses that head as well as any fighter in boxing. Guerrero's been working on it. I've had long discussions with Robert Santos, the manager of Roberto Guerrero, and he says that they're well aware of the Casamayor head. They don't want to get head butted. And so that, you know, if you're afraid to step in because you're going to get butted, you're not going to knock the guy out. Five to nothing, Guerrero. You know what, Harold, thank you. That was a brilliant explanation of what we're seeing, and it makes sense. Right, Emmanuel? No, I don't think he just because of that. I mean, it just, it's, I think just the rhythm and movement has got him where he's, he, he's, I don't know, he's just fighting too technical. I mean, just a simple jab, he could stop the guy from even getting in, but no, no. Casimir has been known to use his head, but in this type of a fight with a guy like him, I don't think that would be a factor. I think Guerrero just fighting too tentative. Too intelligent. I go back to my original point. I've always wondered if he lacks a certain killer instinct. He's a very good fighter. He has no credential yet with which to try to claim that he's something better than that. He's always had the potential, or so it seems. Of course, in the 140-pound weight class, you're talking about stars. You're talking about Timothy Bradley, Devin Alexander, Amir Khan. All of them have considerable star quality. And there are others. It's simple to steal one or two punches at a time. He's not throwing combinations. No, 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 no knockdown, no knockdown. Come on. Okay, hold okay. it. Box. Straight That's left hand is bound out. to have hurt is, is Casamayor. Right? He is very wobbly now. And anytime he wants, he's right there to do it. That was just, the best yeah. punch Guerrero's thrown in the fight so far. Time! Casamayor escaped along the ropes as Guerrero searched for another left to try to finish it. See what I mean? Now you gotta throw more counters on this fucker. Hey, hands up. He ain't got nothing no more. He can't hurt you, dude. Okay, okay, but hey, keep them hands up. That's all you gotta do. I don't have to tell you nothing. He's doing a good job. He ain't following into his trap. Now he's gonna start forcing himself in because he's behind. All right? All right? Yeah, let him keep, you gotta keep that jab on his face so he can. One, two of the jab. One, two of the jab. One, two of the jab. Jab two times and move, fake him. Let him come in. Work on the inside. Put your chin okay. in. Hide your chin. Right here, you'll see 
Guerrero landed what I said he could have been landing all night if he just got closer with his left hand just before he shot it and throw the right hook as I said before not that it would land because it would move him out of position where he would be trying to avoid the right hook and move right into the left hand instead of throwing the simple one twos that he's been throwing all night. Well, the replay showed you more than the live action did. That big left hand from Guerrero took place across the ring from us, and Guerrero's back obscured for me the fact that Joel did a pretty good job at the last minute of rolling away from the punch and limiting the damage. If he had had a still head, it would have been something else. There it is. There's another one. And again, it's, he wobbles. It's there all night if he throws it. He wobbles every time he lands one. Yeah, because he, when Gasimov gets away, he just barely pulls back because he can't really see punches that good. He just tries to hope that he's out of range. So if he would step in closer with a short authoritative jab where he could move in position with a jab instead of flicking it, he would hit him with those left hands all night long. Uppercut was just short. Second left hand was a little wide. There it is again. His head is straight back. It's all he does is hope he's out of range. It's all night. If he gets close enough before he throws his left hand to hit him every time. And now Casamayor reaches out and grabs Guerrero again. He was penalized once for tackling in the second round. Guerrero seems now to fully understand. Stop, stop. That he can turn out the lights with one big left down. hand if he can find the range. Yep, and if he would put more punches together, it would be easier. But he's still giving uh, Casimir too much space. Robert the Ghost Guerrero. From the garlic capital of the world, Gilroy, California, has become a hero within the sport of boxing for fighting through the crisis of his wife's battle with cancer. Skipped a fight earlier this year to stay with his five-year-old daughter and three-year-old son. Braided his daughter's hair just the way Casey does. Earlier heard referee's instructions from Vic Draculich to Juan Manuel Marquez. Now the other main event participant, Juan Diaz, in his dressing room. Right, first for the chief second. Chief second's in charge of his corner, responsible for the conduct of his corner at all times. The chief second's the only one allowed in the ring at any given time, and that includes final instructions to the fighters prior to beginning the bout. The exception to that is if your fighter sustains a cut, you have a separate cut man. Cut man can come in, but you go out. Other than that, you remain in there, you're in charge. If I bring him to the corner for repair of equipment such as tape or mouthpiece, do it cleanly, quickly, efficiently, no coaching whatsoever. And do you have two mouthpieces? Yes. Have that second mouthpiece available so we don't have any delay in getting the action going again if we lose mouthpiece. Uh, with regards to the use of Vaseline or medication on the skin, keep it smooth to the skin. If it's gobbed on, I've got to call time and have you take it off in her and you don't want to do it. Bottom line, follow the instruction of the inspector in your corner. Any questions at all? All right, now for the fighters. Most of those instructions were given to Ronnie Shields and his staff. Emmanuel, as a trainer, do you scout referees? <laughs> yes, I do to some degree. But uh, you know, I think that Jay Nadez, I'm glad you mentioned it, particularly with Jay. Go, you, in go. the Barrera and Marquez fight, no more. if you remember when there was a knockdown, when Barrera knocked Marquez down and Jay Nadez didn't see it. He, he made and, an and error. And, 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 that's right. And afterwards, you know, I spoke to him and I asked him, I said, what happened? He said, I'll be honest, I made a mistake. I didn't see it. I said, that's a great answer. He and he's, and I incidentally, didn't see, I didn't see it. and he's a very good referee. And, yes, and, he is. and every referee is capable of making mental errors or human errors. In fact, 
it's an almost impossible sport to consistently and fairly officiate. And, you know, I, I can't tell you any other errors that Jay has made. That was one. But the bottom line is he's a very good referee. Yeah, when you referee enough fights, in particular working in a city like Nevada, a state with so many fights, you're going to make mistakes sometimes. Jay's biggest assignment, of course, was Roy Jones against John Ruiz. The night that Jones tried to win a heavyweight belt and did so by decisioning Ruiz. And, and Jay, because of his size and strength, was chosen to help prevent Ruiz from wrestling Jones to the canvas or <laughs> otherwise impeding him in the ring, and it happened. He did a great job. Ruiz and Norman Stone might not have been thrilled with the job, but Jay did what the Nevada State Athletic Commission asked him and assigned him to do. Clean fight. One more point. For a couple of years, Jay Nady has shied away from wearing the microphone, which helps fans to know what's going on in the fight on big HBO telecasts. And we're grateful that he has put the microphone back on tonight. Well, it's become a situation where Casamayor is in the ring more or less in name only. And, yeah. and Guerrero is going to be struggling to earn credit for the victory if, in fact, this goes to the scorecards because Casamayor has looked as though he has Zippo left. Yeah, but he's, he's making Guerrero fight his fight, his style, his rhythm, his face. So it's actually a Casamayor fight even though Guerrero is winning. In case you've just tuned in and missed the first undercard fight, we'll take a quick look back at what happened as Venezuelan rising star Jorge Linares got a chance to help make up for a shocking knockout loss last year. He was given the right to fight against the shorter Rocky Juarez. They're in the lightweight division. Linares outboxed Juarez throughout the entire fight. Won an easy unanimous decision. Knocked Juarez down that one time, and overall reestablished, at least to our eyes, that he has the skills and the talent to become a star in the sport. We'll see. All right, copy box numbers on power punches through the eighth round. Guerrero, 47 of 112, very good percentage. Gazmayor, 13 of 89. Virtually non-existent. Casamayor has landed one significant punch in the fight. Harold, how do you have it through eight? Okay, Jim. Eight rounds to nothing. 80 to 70. Robert Guerrero. You know, Jim, uh, Joe Casamayor is just looking to land that one sneaky left hand. By the way, I got to tell you something. Don't ask Emmanuel Stewart where he scouts the referees. He scouts <laughs> the judges. He kills the judges. <laughs> anyway, back to the fight. Uh, Roberto Guerrero winning the fight with that nice right hand, jabbing, staying away, staying out of range, hoping not to get hit by one of those sneaky Casamayor left hands. Eight to nothing, Guerrero. Would you clarify that statement about the judges? I mean, I'm quite sure some, some of the fans was, to one, me, it's confusing. One night in Detroit, Emmanuel Stewart took a $5 bill, threw it at a judge we all know, and said, take a cab to the airport. <laughs> okay, that's a little bit clearer than before. I like that. That's a good movie. Emmanuel, should fight fans be impressed with Guerrero's wisdom in dealing so carefully with this that Casamayor cannot in any way upset his apple cart? Or should they be unimpressed that he doesn't demonstrate a killer instinct? I don't know how to, you got me a little confused, but I would say this way, as a fan, no, I would not be impressed tonight. I mean, especially question. when I, yeah, because the skill level is there, the opponent is right, 
the perfect opponent for the situation to showcase. And he's not putting punches together. He's fighting just the way Casimir wants him to fight. But he's limiting risk. Yes, he's limiting risk. But I mean, it's not that much risk if he would just throw short, hard punches and step in because Casimir's punches is it's not fast enough for his reflexes to deal with it. The exchanges. There are two goals. One is to win fights. The other is to impress fans, develop bargaining power, and become a star. Guerrero is accomplishing the first goal. Winning the fight. paper both of these first two fights appeared more competitive than the kinds of fights which have passed for normal pay-per-view undercard fare for the last few years this was significantly better on paper in the ring both of the first two fights have turned out to be non-competitive that's promotional bad luck Yep, you never can tell what's going to happen once the fight starts. Okay, I can I can I can you've got to throw him down. You got to put him down. You got to put him down. Look for that. Look at that punch. Let's go. You're losing that fight. You got to go look for that. Look for that one shot. Keep your guard up. Remember keep your guard up, your head down. Casey Guerrero once again, bone marrow transplant earlier this year making what her family calls an excellent energy, recovery right? from cancer. Can't touch you. Hands up, baby. Be strong, be strong. And her Rambo, husband, man. Robert Rambo. Guerrero, okay. noble, loyal, by her side, done all the right things at home. Okay. Trying to do the right yeah. things in the ring hey, tonight. He goes down, pick him up the, the vanquished Joel Casamayor. Yeah, he's a very, very fine human being. He just needs to be a little bit meaner tonight in the ring. Copy box numbers entering the last round. Guerrero is 81 out of 464. That's not a very high percentage. Casamayor is 44 out of 289. That's desultory. Casamayor averaging four connected punches per round and overwhelming majority of them pity pat punches. But of course, he's 39 years old. And his last significant fight was a 10th round knockout Stop. loss to Juan Stop. Manuel Marquez Stop. in you. which Marquez won Excellent. the linear lightweight championship of the world. He still holds it and will defend it tonight against Juan Diaz. It's kind of awkward when you lose a fight in embarrassing fashion, but hold on to your championship fans can sometimes forget that the Kelly Pavlik who was beaten by Bernard Hopkins was still the legitimate middleweight champion of the world that the Juan Manuel Marquez who was totally dominated by Floyd Mayweather last September was still the legitimate lightweight champion of the world that's a good point because I had forgotten all about the fact that Marquez was a champion until this fight was made no no stop back thank you good job box Good left hand by Casamayor that Guerrero kind of walked into at the same time he was landing his own left. Yeah, it's probably the two punches that Casamayor landed tonight. He's both have been just left hand. I don't think it's been Which too much. Which he will claim afterward won him the fight. No, no. <laughs> it may not be that bad. But Joel is one of those utterly arrogant guys. And there's a knockdown. Two, three, Perfect right four, hook on the inside. Five. I didn't think he was capable of seven. that. And it's a deadly. Hey, are you okay? All right, you're sure? He and his people made a big point yesterday of saying that he'd never been knocked down in sparring, never been knocked down in the gym, never been knocked down in a fight, either as an amateur or a pro. They can forget that now. Yeah, he's fighting, been fighting Casamayor's fight all night long. He was playing pity pet games after and got caught with one of those punches coming in. That knockdown will allow Casamayor to claim that he's as good as ever <laughs> and should have another big fight. Well, 
profound example of how to win a fight and gain no particular career purchase in the process. This isn't going to do much for Robert Guerrero, unfortunately. He goes the distance with a seemingly near shot. Joel Casamayor, and just to add icing to the cake, goes down, being knocked down for the first time in his career in the last round. And incidentally, we told you, they're old friends. Casamayor mentored him when they were young. They have a lot of respect for each other. In Guerrero's case, maybe too much respect for Casamayor. <laughs> but you saw it there yep. as they embraced each other at the end. Now, quickly, let's take a look at the right hook knockdown, which Casamayor was able to fashion against Guerrero in the last round. And this is a different view. It's actually a jab. It's a hard jab. A hard jab knocked him down. Knocked him down. A guy who says he's never been knocked down even in the gym goes down by walking into a jab. Unbelievable. A simple, hard right jab. We've seen that a couple of times yep. recently. Yes. You know, Joshua Clady went down on a hard jab against Miguel Cotto in Madison Square Garden, and ultimately it cost him the fight. Yeah, but that was a good, solid punch right there. But the fact that if he'd have stepped it up at the fight, wouldn't even, I don't think he'd been this long anyway. But when you're fighting this type of a fight, anything can happen. So, so let's take a look at which judges will score this fight. You saw Harold's scorecard, 98-89 in favor of Guerrero. Lisa Giampa. No notable fights, zero title fights. She's the wife of former terrific veteran judge Chuck Jampa, a good friend of ours. Dick Alcott, Nevada, seven title fights, including Bernie, Vernon Forrest dominating Sergio Mora in their second fight. Robert Hoyle, 23 title fights. He's gradually developing a resume. We've traveled with him to Europe for Vladimir Klitschko fights. He had uh, Mayweather with a wide margin, of course, over Shane Mosley earlier this year. Michael Buffer has the official particulars on this decision. Let's go to it. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas, we go to the scorecards. Robert Hoyle scores it 98-89. Dick Halk, 98-89. Lisa Jampa, 97-90. All to the winner by unanimous decision. Robert, the Ghost Guerrero. Well, let's take a look at CompuBox numbers in this fight. Totally dominated by Guerrero. To the degree that anybody scratched in the fight. I mean, together, they landed 139 punches. That's 13.9 punches per round landed by both fighters combined. And there weren't a lot of hard shots involved in that. And both connect percentages were under 20%. Now, here's the big difference in the fight. Guerrero landing 40% of his power shots, including several big left hands one of which put Casamayor down and several others rattled him. But at the end of the day, as Emmanuel Stewart correctly pointed out all evening, Guerrero was fighting Casamayor's fight and the price he pays is no knockout, goes down in the 10th round, gets a decision win, but not the glory that he might have hoped for tonight. The Las Vegas Sun, or the Las Vegas Strip, brightly lit. Fans are still trickling in. Here at the Mandalay Bay, the hot desert sun sets over the mountain. Still to come, 23-year-old undefeated Danny Jacobs in his 21st professional fight faces Dmitry Pirog of Russia for a title belt which was ridiculously vacated by the governing body. I mean, to call this a championship fight is frankly a joke and a bad one. But that shouldn't insult Jacobs and Perog, both of whom are terrific young fighters trying to make a mark in the sport. Don't let it be a black mark against them that they are unjustifiably fighting for a title belt, which should never have been made available here. And then in our main event, Juan Manuel Marquez against Juan Diaz, following his knockout loss to Marquez last February, Diaz moved up to 140 pounds, where he split two fights with Pauli Malinazzi in lackluster fashion. Marquez, meanwhile, lost a lopsided decision to Floyd Mayweather at welterweight. Now they're back down at lightweight, seeking to prove they're still players in and around the 135 pound weight class probably the best at this moment for both of them. It's the main event. First, let's take a look at our upcoming boxing calendar. 
Boxing After Dark returns next Saturday night from St. Louis, Missouri, as hometown favorite Devin Alexander defends his 140-pound title against Andreas Kotelnik. Also that night, light heavyweight title holder DeForest Cloud faces ageless Glenn Johnson. One week later, World Championship Boxing travels to Montreal for another light heavyweight matchup as undefeated Chad Dawson faces off with Jean Pascal, who is defending a title belt on his home turf. And here's a look at our next pay-per-view event. Vargas couldn't do it. De La Hoya couldn't do it. Margarito couldn't do it. With millions of Mexicans behind him and the pride of 200 years of Mexican independence, can Sergio Mora do what no Mexican great has done before? Take out Sugar Shane Mosley. Plus, fights with rising Mexican superstars Raul Canelo Alvarez and vicious Victor Ortiz. 200. Celebrate and dominate. Mosley versus Mora. Saturday, September 18th, live on pay-per-view. There's a live look at Juan Manuel Marquez. Most experts believe when you evaluate him as a lightweight fighter, you can more or less throw out his ill-fated trip to welterweight last year to fight Floyd Mayweather, a bigger, better man. Now he's back where he can do the most damage. Emmanuel Stewart, tell us about the keys to victory for Juan Manuel Marquez tonight. If it's not broke, don't fix it. The keys to victory for Juan Manuel Marquez is to do just what he did the first fight, to fight a very patient fight, take advantage of the mistakes that will be made by the inexperienced fighter and to work his jab, place his punches very effectively and not try to get into a punch output contest. In the case of Juan Diaz, he rose to prominence. In the case of Juan Diaz, he rose to prominence in the lightweight division largely on energy, will and commitment. When he moved up to 140 pounds last year to fight Pauli Malinaji, he was twice matched against a superior boxer, wound up with a controversial win and a thundering loss. What are the keys to victory tonight for Diaz as he goes back down to 135? Diaz has more of a problem. First of all, he's got to fight to some degree the type of a fight that he fought before, but not to just get carried away expecting the fight to be like a three or four or five round fight. Be prepared mentally for a long fight, and after he places his combinations, try to move away. It would be good for him to box, but I just don't think that's going to be in his DNA. And if he tries boxing, which I think they're going to try, it would just only be for a certain amount of time. And even in that style, Marquez would be able to pick him apart. He's got to be aggressive and rough and then move away after he finishes his combinations. Yeah, it's troublesome for Diaz. He's kind of caught between styles. A decision was made as he got up to better opposition that he had to box more. He's lost three of his last five fights since he started trying to box better. He has improved but he's fighting better boxers. Meanwhile, we're about to see a young man about whom there's a lot of enthusiasm here in the United States. Daniel Jacobs comes from the same Brownsville, Brooklyn neighborhoods that produced Mike Tyson, Riddick Poe, a variety of other good fighters. And he's made it to a prominent position in the middleweight division. Now, he wasn't in his amateur career in a cycle which would have properly sent him to the Olympics. He was basically too young in 2008, didn't want to wait until 2012. So he doesn't have that Olympic pedigree that is the, the precursor to a lot of big star careers in the sport. Can he get to where Ray Leonard and Roy Jones and Oscar De La Hoya have gotten even without that Olympic background? I definitely think. And in fact, the Olympic gold medal hasn't meant that much in a long time. The last guy I remember was maybe Oscar or something like that. But uh, look at Andre Ward. He won the Olympics, and he's just now getting his recognition here. So it doesn't mean what it used to be. They don't show the, the boxing on TV anymore. So I think doing what he's doing, like a lot of fighters, Mike Tyson, Thomas Hearns, Aaron Pryor, a lot of guys didn't, when they didn't even go to the Olympics. I think he's turned professional. He's been moved along very beautiful, I think, by his promotion company, Golden Boy and Al Heyman. He's been fighting the right fights. Getting a championship fight at an early age, but when you look at it, in this weatherweight division, there's really no veteran name, so to say, up there, but Martinez, because I don't know where Paul Williams is, so all of the fighters up there are really like 20 fights, 13 fights, 18 fights, so, you know, it's not a Marvin Hagel up there, uh, uh, Tommy Hearns or Ray Leonard or Ray Robinson, so I think he's fortunate to be in a situation where he is, and he's ready for this fight. In fact, he's the veteran in this fight, and they come.